before. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, everybody, uh, we're back again. We're trying the sound. We got uh, the Lord's bless us with a new wireless uh, mic, so we're trying it. That's the reason that we then announced this program, so we're testing it. So, right. But we do have a little message, and we want to pray for you as well. That's right. So uh, it's not a waste of time. And hello to whoever came. I can't see your name from here. And, uh, but give us a thumbs up if you can hear the sound. Um, before, we started with good sound, and then the sound went off. But anyway, so uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday, we're going to put off the marriage workshop or the teaching on marriage for another week. Uh, because of what's happening today in the world with the U.S. and even here uh, in Canada and locally with protests and riots and racism and all of that. So I want to spend some time in talking about those things tomorrow night and praying about this. And, you know, is, is uh, protest a good place for Christians to be at? You know, so, you know, we'll, we'll find out what uh, my opinion is and then we'll take it from there. Right. And the reason I have a good opinion is because I am not, uh, I'm Spanish, so we're considered not white, nor really black, but we're considered brown. Spanish, we're considered brown. And uh, when I first came to Canada at the age of 11, I was peach black. So, you know, I was really dark, and it took me about 10 years to lose my color. Uh, so, um, anyway, so uh, let's pray right now and ask the Lord just to bless our time together here. And we're going to talk a little bit about faith, something that is in the heart of Derek. And I thank Derek Carpenter to be with me here today because, you know, um, we talk every week and God uses us to encourage one another. Right. And, uh, and the Lord leads us uh, by His Spirit. So it's not just Brother John is the, who, who's around us, uh, around myself. Uh, every week, like uh, Chris, uh, like a Steve, and other people around me as well. So anyway, God bless you, everybody. Father God, right now, in Jesus' name, bless our time together. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Cover us with your precious blood. Pour the oil of your Spirit upon us. We submit ourselves to you, and we resist the devil in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, that the sound will be perfect. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that it will not be lost, and you will teach us this new little system that we have, that it will be great for outdoors as well. So, Father, we commit this time into your hands. Encourage those that will be listening now and later. And, um, and Lord, bless every home, every family, O oh God. And uh, let, us, let us do something mighty for you in this last hour, we ask in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. And amen and amen. So, you know, especially, you know, we're going to talk about a little bit of faith, and then I'm going to comment on it in a few minutes. And, uh, but, it, you know, it comes handy, especially after the teaching of last Sunday, uh, when we talk about Pentecost and, uh, and the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, believe, repent, baptism, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is coming back. So, uh, and, and for us to do what the disciples did, you know, the disciples, 11 of them, uh, went and disciple others. They passed down the gospel, the true gospel, to others. And the Bible says that the whole world was evangelized. Not that the whole world was saved, but the whole world had, had heard the gospel in that time. So, you know, I, I, I like to see that again, that, you know, every province, every city will have true disciples with the true gospel, that they will be able to uh, pass on the true gospel of Jesus Christ and evangelize our, our region where we live, and then our nation of Canada, of course. So uh, anyway, so Derek, the floor is yours, and what is God saying to you about uh, faith? Faith. You know, I, I think, um, you know, faith is a, is a word that has been talked about in, in churches and from all different ways and all different forms. And, and I think a lot of times, uh, um, you know, as I was kind of, you know, thinking about this topic this morning, faith is... A lot of times, uh, something that we feel we have to generate. Um, you know, I don't have enough faith, or 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 how do I get faith? And uh, in a sense, that's true. But but remember, when, you know, when 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 you truly have repented, and uh, and you've been baptized to Jesus Christ, and you've been saved, and 
when you know when you've when you've gone into that water of baptism you know that old man dies that old nature dies and you come up in your new creation and and when the holy spirit fills you up you you are a new being you operate in a whole different way now you're a spirit led man versus a carnal or a fleshly led man and so what that means is is faith in that new creation comes uh, from deep within and uh, so the ability to live in faith is there but here's one thing which I think we all often miss is that faith the Bible says that faith without works is dead okay but you look at the word works works also means faith without obedience is dead That's right and so the idea is is that we need to obey we need to obey the Word of God and uh, so uh, on top of that I want to give you a little scenario or a little example let's say that John and I are out and it's a foggy day and and let's say I don't know John that well but I know him a little bit and uh, so anyways I'm walking along in the fog and it's really thick but then John yells to me from behind me and says hey there's a truck coming Derek move now at that moment you know I know John a little say I know John a little bit I believe he's I believe he's John because his name is John he's introduced me other people have called him John but now he is telling me to move do I believe him enough to act on what he is telling me okay so there's a truck coming do I move if so and if I don't move well I could die type of thing but at that point do I believe enough in him and who he is and that the words that he's saying is true enough to actually move and to actually act Okay, so faith is a lot like that. When, the, when Jesus tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel, when he tells us to cast out demons, when he tells us to lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed, when he tells us to make disciples, when he tells us to baptize them uh, in water, uh, when he tells us all of these things, do I believe enough in Jesus to do what he tells me to do? as a follower of Jesus Christ. So I can believe in him. I believe he was the son of God. I believe he died for me. I can believe all that. But the Bible says that the devil, that the, the demons believe him and tra believe in that too. But faith is when you take the words of Jesus and you act on them. That's obedience. So our faith grows when we act and are obedient. Now here's what's very, very important. Many of us have been raised in churches, various denominations for, 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 you know, me it's 40 plus years or even more, but we've done a lot of listening. We've done a lot of talking. We've listened to a lot of examples, a lot of sermons. But yet, in my life, so many times I've looked at the book of Acts and I said, why in the book of Acts is, are Christians living this way, but yet in my life I'm living this way? I do a lot of hearing, I do a lot of listening, I got a lot of stuff in my head, I can even regurgitate it back out, Amen. but I'm not living yeah. the life that they did in the book of Acts. So what was the difference? What is the difference? Almost three years ago, my wife and I were, were at that place and we were saying, you know what, we keep reading, we're, you know, we're, we're entering into 50 years old and we're, we keep looking at the words and hold it now. We keep hearing and hearing and hearing, but there's no doing, there's no going. We're not seeing any changes. We're seeing people dying of cancer all around us. We're seeing people full of, full of demons in their lives and suicides and everything else. There's got to be something else. There's, this isn't the, 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 the life that we're supposed to be living. So then you go back to the book of Acts and you say, what was the difference? The difference was after the day of Pentecost, they went, they did, they obeyed. They obeyed, they preached the gospel according to, to what Peter did on, on, on the book of Acts, you know, and, and they went out, and guess what happened? People were saved, people were baptized, people were delivered, people were set free, and the church just came alive. So we need to take our faith to another level or to the level of obedience. So a lot of times we look at the Bible and we say, okay, well, let's look at the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, okay? And cast out demons, lay hands on the sick, and 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 and, and, and raise the, snakes, the dead. Raise the dead. <laughs> if the snakes don't bite you, they're not going to hurt you. If you drink any poison, it's not going to hurt you. All these type of things. 
And we look at that, there must be some theological uh, 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 comparison to, to something. No, it's as clear as that. And when, and when my wife and I and, and many others have gone out and said, we're going to start living it, go preach the real gospel to people, and guess what happens? We preached it, we started laying hands of people on the streets, and they were healed. Demons were cast out on the waterfront of Halifax. People were saved. People were full of the Holy Spirit on Spring Garden Road. Boom, life started to happen. So, John, I think, you know, it, it's a good time that, that on Sunday you spoke about, about the day of Pentecost. And you talked about the, 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 the true gospel and the power of the gospel to change and that change and transform the life of Peter and, and, and all those ones in the upper room. We are at a point right now where the church has got to take hold of that. Our world is, 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 an, is in a mess. We all know that. We see it on the television with the riots and the looting and the stealing and, and, and everything else. Everything is a mess. If ever there was a time in history where the church needs to come alive, where the church needs to act, it's, it's now. now. It's now. It's now. And that means that we need to take the word of God for what it is. For example, when Jesus says that we are to be, we, we are to be baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, that we need to be born of the water and of spirit, he means that. He means born of water. That's a baptism. He means born of the spirit. And so the thing is, we need to take the word for what it was. We have to live by it, we have to obey by it, and we need to go. And so I believe that, that God is beginning... No, he's never... Uh, excuse me. He's not beginning something. He, he finished that 2,000 years ago. But we as the church need to start growing. So we're... You know, John and I are here today. We're coming together because we believe that God is going to start to grow the church in this area. We've given our lives to, that, to this, as many others have. But it's time that we start living in faith. And, and to make it easier for you all, that faith is obedience to Jesus Christ. You need to obey. And sometimes obeying is hard, but that we do not have a choice. What do you think, John? Well, I think that's, what comes to mind is this, is that the disciples walked with Jesus for three years. Three years. So they walk with the Word. The Bible says that Amen. Jesus was the Word. So for three years they walked. But then what happens is the day of the Pentecost, Jesus left them. Imagine that. He left them. So he says, you know what? You watch me do everything that I have done. He says, now I'm going to go and I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father and I'm going to send the Comforter to be with you and, and I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit on fire. But now it's no longer you following me in a sense the way you have been following me in the past three years. But now you got to start, like Derek says, now you got to start putting faith into works. Meaning you got to go greater things you're going to do. That's what Jesus said. He says, when I leave... You're going to do greater, greater things. You know, some people, interpretation is that, this, that there are going to be masses doing what he did. Uh, what is discipleship? Jesus says, go and disciple people. What is that? To teach them and to observe what they saw in him doing it. And, and what comes to mind is this, is that a, a lot of us, the reason that we're not going, listen, the reason that we're not going is because we haven't arrived to the upper room yet. So we're still following, we're following, we're hearing the word of God by others, just like the disciples heard Jesus about it. But what happened before the upper room? They denied him, they deserted him, they betrayed him. So they did all of those acts when he walked with them for three years. And, and, and that's what I, what I sense right now is that, you know, we, um, we are uh, walking in the word, we're hearing the word in our churches, but because we're not doing is that we have not been experiencing Pentecost and have uh, an upper room experience in our life. And that's the reason that on Sunday I spoke about the importance of having the Holy Spirit. You know, that's what, that's what Paul said to, uh, the, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 2. He says uh, he was talking to the disciples. So the disciples accepted, uh, believed in Jesus. They were walking with Jesus. But then he says, have you received the Holy Spirit? And I believe that 
Once the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, then faith is more activated. You know, the Bible says, to many as receive him, he has given a, a measure of faith. So now the faith comes in obedience. So what are we going to do? Okay, Jesus has left. Okay, so now they're sitting there. They go up to the upper room. Boom, the Holy Spirit comes. They start speaking in different languages. And then the first day, Peter goes out there, the one that denied him, goes out there with this boldness, preaches to thousands of people and, and, and the gospel, and they receive what? The, the message, uh, the full message of the true gospel of Lord Jesus Christ. He says, hey, you know, now that you believe, the message made them believe, then he says, okay, now you got to repent. You got to get baptized in water. You got to, you, for the remissions of your sin in Jesus' name, and then you have to receive the Holy Spirit. So I believe that, you know, I believe that a lot of us that are not really going or obeying is because we don't probably have the, the, um, the boldness of Pentecost of what should take place in our lives as believers, or we were evangelizing before, may we were put, put, uh, put in our faith to works before, but now we have become complacent, we have apathy, we have left it, and what happens now, you know, and that's what I tell everybody, you know, what you see in the country today, it might be just the reason that we have, we have allowed that to happen in our nation, because we have left our first love, we have left our, our place in God, we have left that place of, that Derek is talking about, obedience, and that is obeying the word of God. Jesus says go, and that, that, that was not a suggestion, that was a command of Christ for us to go. Right. So, uh, you know, you, you'll never know until you go. I mean, how I started here in, in, in Nova Scotia to, with the radio and all of that, I, I was frustrated and I went up to a pastor, I said, pastor, I said, you know, uh, you know, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And then Laura says, you know, why you keep waiting for me? I'm waiting for you to step out. That's right. You know, and, 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 the, and the three Hebrew, uh, the lepers, the three lepers story in the Old Testament came to mind. And he says, you know, that they were there, what? Dying. All, all three of them, they were dying. And they were afraid to go out because the enemies out there will probably uh, uh, kill them or whatever. But one of them said, he says, you know, what are we doing here and dying? I says, you know, let's go out. And if we go out and if we die, we die. Uh, but what about if we don't die? And the Bible says that at dawn, D-A-W-N, they made the first step. And then in a few scriptures down, it says that at dawn, the Lord sent the noise of many armies. And that army fled because they were afraid. So when the three fellows went into that camp i mean no but no soldiers were there no enemies were there so and that's how i started the ministry how you gotta go you gotta uh take that step of obedience right. you know because you know you say well i don't know if i should go or not and whatever if jesus said go then he says hey don't worry i'm gonna be with you I'm going to be with you right to the end. I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you nor fail you. I'm going to be with you and I'm going to show you uh, the wisdom that you need. You know, what, what does the Bible say? It says, don't worry when you go out there because the Holy Spirit will speak through you. So I believe that he has, you know, Derek is talking about something important here, that, you know, obedience. Obedience to what? To the Word of God. But I believe that he also comes with that experience that we have with God. So experience without obedience, we're dead again. Amen. But if we have experience with obedience, then we can do something that we desperately need, especially in this hour. Well, let me let me read a read a scripture about, uh, and, and and you just led right into this perfectly. You know, we've all heard about building our life on the rock, on the solid rock. You know, the wise man builds his his house upon the sand, or the, the rock, and the foolish man builds his house upon the sand. We learned it from Sunday school, and there's a song that goes with it. And, and this is what I'm saying, is that we've learned the lessons. We know the scriptures. You know, I was raised in a Baptist church, and you know, the, and, and my Baptist people, the people that I grew up with, they know the, they know the Bible inside out, but they have no power. And, uh, and so they could talk about it, and they've all come, we know, I know all the stories when I was raised a Baptist. But just like John said, it's, it's not until you get the fullness and the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life 
that the word comes alive. It, it ignites that word inside of you. And that word, when it gets ignited, starts to build faith. And, uh, and so basically, obedience is, is something that starts something. Okay, now listen to this. So I'm going to read that scripture about the good foundation. And it says, Therefore, everyone who is hearing my words and is doing them, I will liken to a very wise man who is building his house upon the huge rock. And the rain came down, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and they fell down against that house, and it definitely had not fallen down because a grounded foundation had been made, made upon the huge rock. And everyone hearing these words of mine and not doing them shall be likened to a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rain came down, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell down, and the collapse of it was great. And it came to pass, when Jesus himself finished these words, these multitude of people were made amazed by his teaching, because he was teaching them as having authority, and definitely not as the scribes. So, think about that scripture. Okay, what's very interesting is, is that Jesus is saying those who hear my words and then it's broken into two categories, those that do them and obey them and those that do not. The ones that do obey them are very wise and no matter what comes at them, that foundation of the faith in him and Jesus Christ, it, they will not be shaken. But the ones who do not do what they've heard That's right. are likened to a house that built on sand. And when it falls, the Bible says it's a great fall. Okay? Then the comparison here is, it also says at the end, in chapter 20 and 29, it says, Jesus spoke as one of authority. There was power in his words. His words were alive, not as the scribes, as the religious teachers. See, what you need to realize is, is that, oh, how do I get, how do I get faith? Do it. You need to go, you need to not only hear, but you need to do. And now here's the exciting part. It's not like, oh, dear God, I got to go back 30 years and try to figure this out, or 10 years. No, because you have heard the word. You got it. You've got that word, whether you're Baptist or Anglican or, 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 or Nazarene or, or whatever you are, Wesleyan. You've got the word. But here's the exciting part. Obey it. And what happens? Your life and the foundation of your life begins anew. And then what happens is as you go, faith comes. As faith comes, so does the power. And as Amen. the power comes, then you begin to transform your life and the lives who you touch. So that's what's exciting about what we're talking about. The day, you know, Jesus gave the Great Commission, but he said to the, his, his disciples, but do not do anything anything until you go to the city and wait for the power to come from on high. He told them to wait. And 120 of them were in that upper room and bang, it came. And then the power of the gospel and the church began on that day. So here's what you as people of God need to understand. That you need to take what you've heard and now you need to do it. Jesus said whom the Son sets free is free in Indeed, you need to be free, okay? If Jesus said that you need to be free from addiction, you need to be free from poverty, you need to be free from pornography, you need to be free from alcohol and drugs and depression and anxiety, you need to be free, then that is a statement of God that you need to be free. And that freedom comes by faith, by obeying the word of God. So, John, I, I, if you're in agreement, I think it's time we started praying for people. Okay. Unless, you, unless you've got something to say. I, I just want to say something over here. You know, the, the unfortunate thing and the fortunate thing is this. Um, two scenarios, and then we're going to pray. The scenario number one is this. The Bible says that to him that matches, um, to him that, that have sinned the most, will love the most. I mean, who, who, whoever was forgiven the most will love the most. And, and that was my experience. I experienced God when I, 
when I turned my life and I, I began to follow Christ, you know, I had an, a, a physical, spiritual experience because I was dirty in the inside. So what happened, you know, the Bible says to him that is, much is forgiven, loveth much. And, and maybe because we have an experience. And the reason that I, I, I turn really quickly and I follow him is because I felt and that experience. But on the other hand, some people that live like Nicodemus, okay, he was, you know, a righteous man. He had a good life. He had all of that. And then the Lord sent a, a man of God to pray for him and to, and, and all of that. So what happened? And then says, you must be born again. So some people, you know, they, they have a physical, spiritual experience. And some, other, and some people don't. You see, but that doesn't mean, you know, I, I remember um, people used to come to me and they said, oh, I wish I had your testimony. And I would say to them, I wish I had yours. Because they were brought up in a Christian home. You know, they, they, you know so don't go by the experiences. Experiences are good. You know, uh, in the road to Ma Damascus, Saul met Jesus, and then he, his name was changed to Paul. It's good to have an experience. But, if, but I feel, you know, if, if you didn't have an experience as others have, then it should be easier for you because you have less baggage than maybe other people have, and you're able to obey him. Uh, but, at the, but, but at the same time, a lot of people that are like that, that they've been good all their lives and everything like that, and then they come to a place of, uh, of uh, being born again and follow Christ and even being baptized in the Holy Spirit and all of that, then fear keeps them right. in, in a safe place. So what happens, this one, the wild ones, they had an experience, they go and do it, and then, uh, then because of the cares of the world or because of uh, what the hypocrisy they see in the church and all of that, maybe they run out of gas and they go back into com uh, being complacent and, 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 and have no desire to do the works of God anymore. So, you know, where are you here? Are you someone that had a, an experience with God when you came to him and now you lost it? You know, you lost it because of the cares of the world or because of the hypocrisy you've seen in the church? Or are you one that is had a good upbringing? Maybe you were brought up in a Christian home. Maybe you, you, you know, you, you were not a really bad person in the world, but then the Lord showed you that it's not by being good, but it's, it's a free gift of God, it's the grace of God. And then you become born again, you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but now you're in a place of complacency as well, just like this group over here are, and nobody's going anywhere. Why? Because the enemy knows all the tricks in the world to keep this uh, uh, bunch of people uh, neutralized, crippled, and, and the same with the other group. So where are we? Because, you know, faith, obedience, all of that should snap us out of this situation, go back to our first life, go back and thank God for saving us, whether you had an experience uh, supernaturally or you didn't. The main thing is that we are, we are saved by faith. So anyway, so I, I, I think that, you know, we all need to go. We all have that, 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 that calling upon our lives and the command of Christ, and that is to step out, to step out. In, uh, and we do that. Faith, you know, it, we use it in every way. You know, we use it in, in praying for a job. Lord, should I take this job or not? Lord, should I do these things? You know, because, you know, God, now you belong to the Lord now, and God wants to lead you. God wants to lead you into his best for you. He has a plan for you and all of that. But in, in every plan that he has, whether it be evangelism, praying for people, being in the ministry, or, or going to work, or being a husband or a wife or, or, or whatever, I mean, God wants to help you out in the situation that you're in, but we have to obey. We have to say, Lord, I want to obey your word. I want to step out by faith, but I want to know. Because, you know, the latter part of the scripture that Derek wrote, uh, read is this. It says, be not only hearers of the word, be a doers of the word. And the latter part of that scripture says, deceiving your own selves. Mm -hmm. So what happens, the devil knows that that's the scripture. So he doesn't want us to obey the word. 
He doesn't want us to step up by faith. Why? Because we'll deceive ourselves. That means that we, we cause harm to ourselves and we become miserable, no joy, no power, no miracles, nothing in our lives. And then, you know, we become a wishy-washy Christian and that's what the Bible talks about. Anyway, so yes, <laughs> yeah. anyway, that, yeah. was, that was in my heart. That's good. No, I, I think, um, you know, what's strong about what we're doing here, John, is I think, uh, you know, we keep talking about unity and being in one accord and so forth. But, you know, what I think we found with you and I is that when God brings us together, even for something like this, everything seems to fit back and forth. And so that's what our craving is for the body of Christ, is that we can be in one accord. And to be one accord, you need to believe the same gospel. And you need to believe in the same life. You know, the book of Acts is, is where the church began. And if you started, you know, if we're going to pray for you today, and then we're going to pray for whoever's watching, that there's some of you there that, you know, you've heard about repentance and baptism. You know, the, the, the way to salvation is through repentance, true repentance. That's realizing that God's a holy God and we're not, and that we've sinned and we've fallen short. And that the only way that we can truly be saved is to repenting to a holy God. You repent unto God and say, God, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I've done things that, that others would never believe. And when you come to him and you say, dear God, please forgive me for what I've done. And you lay them out. You just speak to him and say, I lay these all out. Please forgive me. When you do that, the Bible says that he gives you a new heart. He takes that cold heart, cold, dead heart, heart of stone, the word says. And he breathes life into to a new fleshy heart. He gives you a new heart. Then, you know, then the Bible says, repent and be baptized to Jesus Christ. Why to Jesus Christ? Because he died on the cross. We need to take his death. We need to take his burial. And we have to be risen like he was. That's what baptism is. You go down under the water, the old man dies. He dies, or that's his tomb. And then the new life comes in, he's raised up into a new creation. Repent and be baptized, each and every one of you, to Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Now your sins are forgiven. Now you're a new creation, you've got a new nature. You've got a new nature now, again. That old man, that old nature now is dead. It's gone, it's buried. That old guy, that old Derek, he's, he's gone now. And when I came out of the water, I'm a new guy, I'm a new person. But now the Bible says, repent and be baptized to Jesus Christ, each and every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. It's a free gift. We can't earn it. We can't buy it. We can't do works to get it. God gives it. And here's what's so important, is you realize that that's the truth. If you've repented, like I talked about, if you've been baptized, and, and you didn't realize that baptism wasn't just a symbol. If you realize it was re it, that right now that it's real and something happened that day, that you're a new creation, then we're going to pray for you that the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. And He's going to fill you up. And that means that anything that's controlled you, any chain that's, 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 that's been wrapped around you from the past, any addiction, any fear, any anxiety, any sickness, anything like that, when that spirit comes upon you, something's going to happen. Freedom's going to come into your life. Life is going to come into your life. And this is an important time because that's what Pentecost was. Those 3,000 people went through the same thing that day. That's what made it so important. That was the beginning of the church. And, that you, and if you remember, the scripture says, this is for you, your children, and your children's children to as many generations as come. It's for today. So, John, I, just, I, I think it's time we should pray. Yep. And Father, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That, Father, you have given us this opportunity, Lord, a couple days after Pentecost celebration, Lord, to, Father, to pray for the people who you've led to watch this telecast, Lord. Father, I pray now that, Holy Year, that you would bring freedom to every person here, Lord, that those who have truly repented, those who have, have now understand what baptism was and the power of it, that they're a new creation, that, Father, right now you would fill them up, fill them up, fill them up with your spirit right now. Yes. And speak freedom, freedom in their life, 
freedom in their Jesus. mind. We break all chains of the enemy. We say all, all unclean spirit, we command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Go, go, set them free, set them free. Yes, right Lord. now in Jesus' name, that young lady, Lord, that lady, that, 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 that woman who's been in church for almost 40, 50 years, Lord, I speak freedom right now. Fill yes, her up. Lord. Fill her up. We just come against any tradition, any, any mindset. That, that would keep them thinking that they're, they shouldn't be free, Father, and, or afraid of the Holy Spirit, that right now you would break that in the name of Jesus, and I speak freedom right now. Freedom, fill them up, fill them up, fill them up right now. Freedom. Thank and you, And we Lord. command all unclean spirit to go. Holy Spirit, fill them up and set them free. Right now, Father, I pray that all chains of addiction will be broken. Father, that could be pornography. That could be, that could be fear. That could be anxiety. That could be, that could be discouragement. That could be... Uh, uh, that could be shame from the past if something happened, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for every woman, every young lady, Lord, who's, given a, who's had an abortion in their life, Father, that, Lord, that you would let your healing balm touch them, Father, yes, Lord. that you would set them free, Lord, that, Father, as they repent unto you, Lord, and give their life to you, that you would set them free, yes, Father. and, Father, and give them peace, Lord, right now, and command all that shame to go right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, we Lord. command every sickness, every disease, all cancer, Heal Father. Bodies, Lord. All cancer, Father. All skin conditions go, Father. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, we command healing. Right now, all unclean spirit, we command you to go in the name of Jesus. Freedom, freedom. We speak life into every person watching this. Right now, Father, we ask you to fill that room. Fill that room with your presence, Lord. That, Father, that all that fear would go. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for you for what you've done, Jesus. We thank you that your word is real. We thank you that your word is true. Father, as we obey, as we go, Father, we will see your power. But Lord, we yes. know that as right now we are going, we are taking your word as it was, Father. We are casting out demons, Lord. We are laying hands in the Spirit right now on everyone on the other side of this camera, Lord, that, Father, we speak freedom yes, into their life Lord. and healing Touch into them, their bodies right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we are saying, Lord, we are preaching the gospel of repentance and water baptism and the Holy Spirit right now, Father, that your spirit Jesus. would fall right now on every person listening Jesus. in that room. In the name of Jesus, Father. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. We come against any religious spirit that, Father, that is every. listening to this and saying, no, 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 no. This is truth. Father, let the gentleness of the spirit of truth with the Holy Spirit fall right on them right now. In Jesus' name, speak truth deep into their inner being. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for freedom, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for freedom, Lord. We thank you for freedom, Lord. Touch people. We thank you, Father, that the gospel is not a gospel of words. That what we're speaking today is not words, but it's power. Yes, There Lord. is power, Father. We will not speak the gospel of words, but of power. So, Father, let your Holy Spirit power just go out into the lives of everyone who sees this right now, Father, and every life that, with this, that, that will be touched by this being passed on in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Glory be to God. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Meet every need, Father God. Yes, Lord. Every home. You know what they're going through? Homes, uh, suicides out there, uh, marriage problems, oh God. Yes, Lord. Kids at home and, and the thought of where is this world going? Father God, there is a lot of uncertainties and fears and uh, emotions boiling up, oh God. So, Father, we speak peace to those homes, oh God, in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. We speak life to those marriages, oh God, in the yes. name of Jesus. We speak peace to those teenagers at home, yes. Father. And, Lord God, that you will go before us, oh God, in, the, in this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank that you. we will obey you, Lord. That we will obey no matter what comes our way, Father. That we will not look to the left nor to the right, but God, that we will look at the path of Christ in our lives. Yes. And Lord, thy word is a lamp unto our feet, oh God. Yes. Hallelujah. So, Father, help us to be a people of the word of God in this hour, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there might be a time that their Bibles will be taken away from us, yes, oh God. But Lord, we, 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 now that we have them, yes, God, yes, reveal Lord. thy word unto us, oh God, every day of our lives, oh God, that we will be trees of righteousness planted by the Lord, Father. 
people of power, Father, people of the word, oh God, people that are anointed of God, marriages that are strong, Father, in the name of Jesus, families that are strong, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that in the midst of a famine, in the midst of depression, yes, in the midst of oppression, you are Jehovah Jireh, our yes, provider, Lord. Father. You will meet all of our needs yes, according Lord. to your riches and glory. You will meet our physical needs. Yes, you will meet our emotional needs, oh God. You will meet our financial needs. You will meet every need, oh God, in our lives, including guide in our lives, oh God. Hallelujah. Help us in this hour, Father. Hallelujah. And Father, we pray for Halifax and this region, Father. Yes, we Lord. pray for Ontario. We pray for Canada, Father God. Yes, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Yes, Lord. We know that you are in control. What's happening now is not a surprise to you. We pray for the economy, Father. We pray for what's ha ahead of us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And yes, Lord, we Lord. destroy the works of the devil. Yes, and Lord. let only that what God has planned, what God has in store, what God has written in his word come to yes, pass. Lord. Let every other obstacle, God, that will be on the way, O oh God, be removed yes, by Lord. the power of Almighty God. Let God arise in this hour, and let his enemies be scattered in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you Father. Strengthen your people. Strengthen Thank your you. church. Strengthen us, O oh God, in this hour. God, we need you. O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen, amen and amen. I hope the sound was good. This is our first time that we do this uh, together, and we'll continue to do that. Amen. And uh, don't forget, tomorrow night, I'm going to be talking about the place of a Christian in racism or the place of a Christian maybe in protesting and all of that because I believe that, you know, things got out of hand and we need to calm down and get the mind of Christ in this hour. So, and then Sunday, we don't know what, um, what the Lord has, but uh, I was listening to a testimony of a charismatic Catholic. Uh, many years ago, and there was this this uh, this group that they, they they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and uh, and began to believe the word, and the word was everything for them. Amen. And then they went up to this uh, to this uh, church, and a priest came to them. And uh, when the priest came to them, the the charismatic guys, you know, they were on fire for the Lord, and they they start preaching the word. You got to go to the word of God and all that. I says, let us pray for you. And uh, I can't remember the name of the priest, but uh, anyway, so the, the, um, he said, okay, pray for me, you know. And, and uh, the door was open of the church, and then they started praying, and then he cut him off. He said, wait, 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 you know, let me close the door because it was too radical for him. And then um, they were praying for him because he was sick, you know. And then as they were praying for him, he got healed by the power of God. And uh, he was preaching in his Spanish countries. And then from there, he went to take charge of a church for, uh, I think, three weeks. And, um, and in those three weeks, you know, he went up to the pastor and, uh, and he, uh, to the priest of that church. And he said, listen, I said, you know, I know that you're going for three weeks. I'm here for three weeks. And I'm going to, I say, is it okay if I pray for the sick? Is it okay if I preach the gospel? He said, okay, if I, if I do that. So the, the priest that was leaving on holidays for three weeks, he was hesitant a little bit, you know, but because the guy was coming in, the, 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 the priest was coming in to take three weeks in that church, he said, okay, do whatever you want. So then the priest put uh, flyers around in that town. And it was a Spanish country. I can't remember where it was. Uh, it was this, uh, on a Tuesday. So the first Tuesday, a couple hundred people came. And then there were some, uh, what do they call, uh, sick people there, you know, with arthritis and, and, and different things. And then he prayed for the sick. And then as he prayed for the sick, <laughs> they got healed. Uh, they heard the gospel. They, they accepted the, the, the true gospel, the salvation of the word of God, and people got healed. And that group, every Tuesday, went up to 300, 500. He went to over 2,000 people coming to hear that priest in a period of just one month after he was healed himself. I mean, that's a perfect sample of what can take place 
Not yeah. everybody will have that experience, but that is what that priest, I mean, he's probably dead now, but there is a book there, and the book that he wrote was Jesus is alive, right. you know, and, uh, but imagine that's what the gospel is, is the power of the gospel that can heal people, that can save people, that can deliver people, and this is somebody that was, that was in a different denomination, that the, you know, they were still praying to the saints and all of that, but the power of God got a hold of him, experienced Pentecost, got filled with the Holy Spirit, spoke in other languages, and took that right away to another region, and thousands came to the Lord, and many got healed by the power of God. Amen. So, amen. Will you want that to happen in your city and in your region? That's I right. do. So let it happen and let it be, Lord. And here I am, Lord, send me. Amen. Are you available for the Lord Jesus Christ? Because we are living in the last days. Anyway, so Amen. God bless you. One thing before, one, yeah. one thing, uh, you know, those who have heard this before, if, if the Spirit of God touched you, we need to hear about it. And I'll tell you why. You know, the Bible talks about that the Antichrist or the beast will be destroyed by the testimony of the saints and the blood of the Lamb. Okay? We need to know what's, what God is doing so we can build testimony to help others. Just like John just gave a testimony of what happened there, that's encouraging. But the testimony that happens in your life and how God uses you and how God changes you, people, we need to hear it, and so does the body of Christ everywhere. So please respond here. If there, you know, if, if get a, get a hold of, of, of John on, on, on his um, on here, even a message down below to say, yo, can you please contact me or whatever, or just say hi. It, it doesn't matter. Reach Revival Hour, and John will give all the, the connection point. That's one thing. Here's the other thing. You know, the gospel is repentance and baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know what? You don't need to be in a church to be baptized. You don't. But baptism is an important part of salvation. You know, if you, got, if you want to go back into your Bible and go into your, you know, your, your Holy Bible app or whatever, look up the word baptism and start reading through the scriptures on baptism. See what it says for yourself. But here's the thing. If you need to be baptized and you need people to help you do that, let us know that too. We're here for you. Especially for that. now that it's summer, we can go to a lake. Uh, there is uh, here in the, in the city in Dartmouth, or right. it says First Lake. Uh, Daryl took me there the other day. Beautiful area that we can preach the gospel there, get people baptized, do it like in the days of, uh, of old. Correct. So we need to do that. But it's true, you know, I mean, if you, li you know, a lot of people listen to my messages uh, every Wednesdays and, and Sundays. But we need to hear testimonies. We need to. You know, I ask people, you know, send me a prayer request. And people are afraid to send a prayer request. I mean, who cares if you're bound by the devil? Who cares if your marriage is struggling? Who cares? I mean, we all have gone through these things in our lives and Amen. probably are going through things in our lives that we can help each other. Amen? So, uh, you know, be open and send us, you know, Brother John at RevivalHour.ca or, uh, or send us a text privately if you want. In, the, in this website, and go to other programs as well. So anyway, thank you for being part of our first uh, trying this new uh, um, wireless mics that we're going to use outdoors as well. But thank you. Next time, we're going to put more light here, and we're going to use this uh, indoors as well with more lightings and that. So uh, not too yeah. sophisticated, because the power is not in the light, but it's in the light. Jesus Christ, Amen. and the Word of God. Amen. So God bless you. Love you. Bless you. And this is John and Derek. I'm going to turn this bless off. You. Bless you. Amen.